Streetwear culture is a somewhat important part of modern society, affecting everyone's day-to-day -day lives, often without them even noticing. As a whole, streetwear has evolved tremendously from what it was to begin with in the late 1970s. In this documentary, I'm taking you on a journey that will highlight how it began, how it evolved, where it is today, and the direction it's heading in the future. Possibly streetwear's biggest brand, but definitely its most resellable, Supreme started out as a skate label in 1994. The flagship store opened in New York's Soho district on Lafayette Street. Since the opening of that store, the brand's popularity grew exponentially, which prompted the opening of more stores around the world. Over time, Supreme has departed from traditional skate clothing to focus more on general streetwear. Though Supreme is definitely the most widely known streetwear brand, others such as Off-White, Bape and Billionaire Boys Club have established their presence in the industry. Collaboration is one of the most important parts of streetwear culture, and Supreme were part of the most hyped collab of all time. In July of 2017, Supreme released their Louis Vuitton collection, which set the streetwear world on fire. As if retail prices weren't high enough, items like the box logo hoodie can demand thousands on the resale market. It may seem like an unfit match, but high fashion houses collaborating with streetwear brands is mutually beneficial, as it gives brands like Supreme credibility and gives Louis Vuitton street credit. Because of that, both brands extended their client base into each other's market. There are a lot of differences between the British and the American streetwear scenes, so to have a closer look and find out more of the intricacies of it, I travelled to Florida. Kanye West has undoubtedly been a massive influence on modern streetwear culture, and it is commonly said that he's the founder of the hype beast aspect of this. After the release of the Nike Air Yeezy, Kanye's signature shoe, streetwear was revolutionised. He released five more sneakers with Nike, but then began feeling he was treated unfairly, so he left and almost instantly signed a $10 million deal with Adidas. When it was announced that Kanye had joined the brand with the Three Stripes in 2014, his first statement was a promise to his fans. In the near future, everyone who wants Yeezys will have them. It took nearly three years of sneaker releases, but on December 16th, 2017, this promise had been fulfilled with the release of the Yeezy Boost 350 V2 in the blue tint colorway. Kanye made Adidas cool again and was the company's golden child it so desperately needed. In mid-2017, it was announced that after years of falling behind, Adidas had overtaken Jordan brand to become the second biggest sneaker company in the world. He may be responsible for the company's revival, but West wasn't the only musician Adidas signed a sneaker deal with though. There were two major players already there, Pusha T and Pharrell Williams. Pharrell's human race collection is one of the most talked about in the sneaker world and contains a few of the most expensive shoes in the Adidas archive. has a major impact on modern streetwear, and it's often athletes with the latest items that will influence it. Basketball legend Michael Jordan was one of the first sports stars to have an item take off not only on the court, but on the streets too. In 1985, he released the Air Jordan 1, the shoe that started a more than 30 year long legacy. Not only do the stars reap their rewards for their success, but it can also be a platform for their children to work from. I visited a store called The Trophy Room, which is owned by Michael Jordan's son, to have a look at what they had to offer.
Florida had a lot to offer in terms of insight into the American side of streetwear. But as my time in the States drew to a close, I began to prepare for one of the biggest events in UK streetwear. Events like SneakerCon are great examples of how the reselling industry and streetwear itself has grown to such a large scale. Hundreds of thousands of people attend the event across the United States, and as of 2017, it travelled globally. London was the first international stop of the summer tour, and I attended that event. SneakerCon invites sneakerheads and resellers alike to buy, sell and trade some of the most sought after and desirable shoes on the market. Though it is a major part of the event, you don't necessarily have to spend money to have an enjoyable time there. Social media, especially YouTube, has produced some rather inspiring people who share a common interest with their viewer, and SneakerCon is one of the ways you can meet and connect with these people. One such example is JC Lopez, also known as 2J's Kicks, who owns one of the biggest consignment stores in the world, Urban Necessities in Las Vegas. To find out the story of his rise to hype beast stardom, I asked him a simple question. How have sneakers changed your life? Uh, yeah. Three, four years ago I was pretty much jobless, homeless, uh, eating out of trash cans. And now I'm fast forward three, four years and I've been able to travel globally abroad come to events like this and hang out with you guys and um, I, I tend to get a sneaker or two that you don't see every day a lot and uh, it's just been a lot of fun to be able to provide for my family, to be able to help out the 5,000 plus consigners that we have and we've been able to create a brand that seems to be known globally, very humbly. So there's clearly money to be made from reselling shoes, but with such a lot of money involved, there tends to be a risk with it. Counterfeit products are a real problem in the sneaker community, and in recent years, they've become harder and harder to spot. However, if you know what to look for down to the most minute detail, you may be able to tell an authentic product from a fake. Upon purchase of a ticket to the event, SneakerCon offers a complimentary authentication service with their own in-house sneaker expert. As he looks over the shoe, he'll check for various details and aspects of it, such as the quality of the materials, stitching marks, the size label on the inside, and the box label. Whilst he does this, you fill out a questionnaire about the shoe he's checking, stating its name, where you purchased it from, the amount you paid, and some of your personal details. If he determines the shoe to be authentic, a tag will be attached with a unique number that corresponds to your shoe and can be checked on the SneakerCon official website. This tag will help you sell a shoe easier, giving any buyer peace of mind as the tag is only removable with pliers and cannot be tampered with. Any authentication is void if said tag is removed. One of the most common shoes to have counterfeits made is Kanye West's Yeezy Boost 350, and with prices as high as they are, it's no surprise why. With over 7,000 people attending the event between 11am and 6pm, millions of pounds worth of sneakers and streetwear, and the occasional brawl at the convention hall entrance, SneakerCon London was an amazing experience. Every person in that room shares one interest, and the scale it's gotten to is truly incredible. Streetwear started small. It began as functional clothing for breakdancing in the Bronx in the late 1970s, had Latin American influence in LA, and has changed its form countless times over the years. Today, streetwear is a way people can express themselves, something that can bring people who otherwise wouldn't know each other together and become an extremely lucrative business.